Hi folks, one of the things that many of us have played with in our in our past is you may have had Hot Wheel tracks when you were a kid um, and you would send a car down the Hot Wheel track and you'd have a little loop-de-loop -loop built in and we all know that if you don't have enough speed, you're going to have this Hot Wheel crash. Um, but if you raise it to a high enough starting point, give the Hot Wheel car enough speed, it's going to make it all the way around the track and keep going out the other side. We can calculate what that minimum velocity to go around a loop-to-loop -loop is, but let's take a look at a circle and a object that is actually on the upside down of a loop-to-loop -loop, like a Hot Wheel car or a roller coaster car. At that point in time, the centripetal force holding it into that circle is the force of gravity. Now if we look for minimum speed, then this is all there is. If we have any additional speed, the additional speed will also cause a normal force. But I want to know what is the absolute slowest speed I can send something around a circular loop to get it to stay on. Well, if that is true, my centripetal force is going to be my mass times centripetal acceleration, and my force of gravity is going to be mass times acceleration of gravity. As you can see, immediately mass drops away. And why is that moderately interesting? Well, have you ever been on a roller coaster ride and sometimes you see the coaster cars are almost empty and sometimes the coaster cars are almost full? Mass very often is going to drop out of a lot of those equations and which is good because you don't want a car that is so weight dependent that it depends upon if you've got a roller coaster full of sumo wrestlers or Girl Scouts there. You have to make sure you've got something that's going to work. All right, I want to know velocity. So I'm going to take centripetal acceleration and replace it with v squared over r, one of my centripetal acceleration equations, and that's going to be acceleration of gravity. So minimum velocity to go around a vertical loop is going to be the radius of the loop times the acceleration of gravity. So let's say I have a loop with a radius of 20 meters. That's a pretty good size loop. How fast am I going to have to be traveling? 20 meters, 20.0 meters to give me my three sig figs, 9.80 meters per second squared. And when I do this, and I remember I have to square root out the other end, 14 meters per second. That's going to be my minimum velocity. Bigger the loop, bigger the radius, the faster you're going to be going. 